another year's gone, past gone behind us. And a new year is fixing to, to be here. And I want to wish everybody a happy new year and a blessed new year. You know, a lot of us have a tradition of eating black eyed peas on the first of a new year. And whether if you're from the south or the north or the west coast or the east coast, you have your own tradition. So uh, <clears throat> I don't know where it started from, but I do know that uh, my family done it and Danny's family done it. So it's just always something we've always done. It's just a tradition. Um, and it's a good reason to make a big old pot of black eyed peas and cornbread. But I've got a recipe today that I'm going to share with you. I think you might like it. And you can do it in a slow cooker or you can do it on top of the stove, either one. And uh, it's black eyed peas. And I start with frozen black eyed peas. And uh, you don't have to use frozen. But if you do, whether they're from your garden, and you can buy frozen black eyed peas in the store. Uh, you can use dry black eyed peas or even canned, just wh whichever you choose. But if you use canned black eyed peas, you don't want to put them in this recipe until probably closer to the end because they'll get too mushy. But uh, it'll still work either way. But it's a good recipe. It's, it's good and hearty. It's your black eyed peas. It's got um, hamburger meat. It's got cabbage in it. Because I know a lot of people with their black eyed peas will make big old pot of collard greens or they'll make cabbage. So this is kind of all together. And it's got rotel and seasonings in it. So if you like black eyed peas and you like to stick to this tradition, stick around and let's make us a big old pot of cabbage and black eyed peas. And maybe a little cornbread to go with it. Okay, let's get started on our peas and cabbage. And I'm going to do mine in a slow cooker. And like I said, you can do it on top of the stove too. Now, usually I would use chicken stock, but I'm going to use my pork broth because I canned ham the other day. And uh, I'm going to put a cup of water in there with it. It was 32 ounces of broth and a cup of water. And I'm going to put about a tablespoon of chili powder. If you like it a little bit spicier, you can put another tablespoon. And of course, my favorite seasoning is cumin. I'm going to put probably a couple of teaspoons or just whatever. I'll probably end up putting more before it's over with. I got some granulated garlic, put about a teaspoon, and I've got some uh, onion powder, put about a teaspoon, and I've got some oregano that come out of the garden. I'm going to put me, I don't know, a good heaping tablespoon maybe, or a little more. Miss Vicky from Vicky's Country Home sent me a bunch of oregano too of her garden, so I've got enough oregano to get me through the winter, and I use it a lot. So I'm gonna stir that up. And even though I'm gonna put onion and, and garlic cloves in here, I always go ahead and put powdered onion powder and, and granulated garlic. Now, I've got purple whole peas here because that's what the store had. And uh, we like purple whole peas better than we like black eyed peas. And that's a 28-ounce bag. Um, you're supposed to use about 16 ounces. So I'm going to put most of this bag. And I'll stick to the, the recipe and put eh, about 16 ounces. I probably could just put the whole bag in there. Stir that up a little bit. We love purple whole peas and filled peas. Whipple peas. And I've got a whole bell pepper. You can use uh, green, 
red, yellow, whatever you like. And I got a whole onion I'm going to put in here. We love onion. And onion is very good for you. I know a lot of people can't eat onion. A lot of people don't like onion, but we love it. And I've got a whole bulb of garlic here. And I should have done had it ready, and I forgot about it. But uh, I'm probably going to put this whole bulb in here. And there's probably about... Uh, probably about six, seven cloves in here. Not sure. I've got garlic hanging everywhere. Um, we grew a lot of garlic in the garden this year and uh, done really good. And we eat a lot of it and you just bring it in and hang it up and it's going to stay good in here because it's, it's dry in the house and uh, it just stays uh, good and fresh. Just hanging there. Just kind of hanging around in the kitchen. But I'm going to get the, I'm going to smash them and get the skins off of them. Um, like I said, you can do this on top of the stove in a big pan pot. And uh, it'll probably take anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half for it to cook. But I'm going to put mine slow cooker for probably on high for about four hours. And you can put it on low for eight hours. You know, if you're going out or if you happen to have to work tomorrow or something, um, it'll cook all day and then the slow cooker will switch over to warm and stay warm for you. By the time you get home, you got a, a hot meal waiting on you. And uh, that's the difference between a crock pot and a slow cooker. Crock pot will absolutely dry out and burn everything up before you get home. A slow cooker won't do that. I will never own another crock pot ever. So I'm going to put my garlic in there. I'm going to grab all my cabbage. And I had two heads of cabbage. One of them was bigger than this one, and I just didn't think I'd get it all in here. So I, I stuck to the little head. Uh, this is a seven quart slow cooker, so you can tell it's it's holding all it can. I'm gonna put a little bit of pepper, not a whole lot, probably about a teaspoon. I'm gonna put a little bit of salt, a teaspoon of salt, and I will have the recipe down in the description box. Now, this is a whole can of tomato paste, little can. I'm then I've got a can of Rotel. And you don't have to use Rotel. You could just use a can of uh, green chilies, which would be good, too. And now I've got a, a big can of plum tomatoes. Um, I didn't have any crushed tomatoes, so I just kind of crush these up a little bit because I didn't want whole tomatoes in here. So I'm just going to kind of stir this up a little bit. Now it looks like I don't have enough liquid in here, but as time goes on, the liquid, it'll get um, a lot juicier in there and you'll have a lot of liquid by the time it's done. That's what a sold cooker is good for. It won't dry it up and burn it up. And I think I'm, after putting my meat in here, and this is ground beef, and I just seasoned it up a little bit. It's a pound. And you could use um, anything. You could use pork. You could use Italian sausage. You could use uh, kielbasa sausage. And uh, you could use chorizo if you wanted to. Just whatever you like. I think I'm going to add a little bit more cumin, and a little bit more garlic, and a little bit more oregano. I'm not going to add any more salt or pepper. I just like to taste my spices. So, we're good now. Just 
stir this up and we'll get the lid on it. First, I need to wipe around the lid because it's gotten some little bit of juice and stuff on it. And you need to keep, it's kind of like a cannon jar, you need to keep it clean because if that seal doesn't, if that rubber seal doesn't fit down good around the, the edge, it won't, it won't cook as good as it should. So you want that down good and tight. And this is a, a seven quart, um, I forget the name of it now, but anyways, I'll put a link down below from Amazon. They've got all kinds of slow cookers. Just depends on how much you want to spend on one. Four hours on high. And we're good to go. And I'm thinking we need to make some cornbread. So while this is cooking, make some cornbread. Let's make some really good cornbread. Now this is my favorite way to make cornbread, and it's using masa instead of cornmeal, your regular cornmeal. I'm going to be using my Bob's uh, Red Mill masa arena. Now I've got two tablespoons of baking powder and a teaspoon of salt. I got a cup and a half of masa, and I've got a half a cup of all-purpose flour and that's all my dry ingredients and I'm just gonna mix them up a little bit get them going I'm gonna push that back and I'm gonna get my my milk and I've got two eggs I've got one and one-third cup of milk and two eggs I'm gonna mix them up a little bit now, in my iron skillet, I've got a whole stick of butter melting in the oven. And I'm going to get it out, and we're going to put some of that butter in here with the, <clears throat> with the milk and eggs. i got a whole stick in here, but I think I'm going to put all but probably two or three tablespoons in here with my milk. And then I'll leave the rest in the pan for the cornbread. Now if you don't have an iron skillet, this is a 10, 10 and a half inch iron skillet. Use a nine by nine baking pan. Be, that would be just, just right. If you don't have an iron skillet and you wanna to learn to cook with one, I'll leave a link down below for, it's a season lodge, a 10 and a half inch cast iron skillet. I've had a lot of people ask me about them. This is maple syrup, and you can put a little sugar in it if you want to. Danny don't like his cornbread sweet, so we're not going to put any sugar or maple syrup in it. But I am going to put just about a teaspoon of honey. Honey's good for you, and you won't really taste it, just a teaspoon. Mix that up. And now we're going to take our wet ingredient and pour it in our dry ingredients. It don't take very long to get cornbread mixed up. I remember back in the day we had cornbread, it seemed like every other night. And the rest of the nights we either had, uh, there was always be sliced white bread or there'd be biscuits, some kind of bread. My grandpa always had to have some kind of bread. We're going to get this mixed up really good. I had some people ask me about my condiment jars too. And I'll leave a link down below for them. Y'all can look them over. They're really handy little jars and they seal off really good. I'm 
Okay, I got my skillet out of the, the oven. I warmed it up a little bit again. I'm going to put my pot holder over the handle because I'm real bad about grabbing that handle and forgetting how hot it is. And we're just going to put all of our cornbread mix in here. That smells really good. To me, I guess that's one of my favorite smells anymore is the smell of masa. It won't take very long for this cornbread to cook. It'll probably take about anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes. In my oven, it'll probably take about 15. And we'll be good and done. I love this cornbread. It's got a nutty taste to it. It makes a really pretty cornbread, too. So let's get it in the oven. Hey, guys. You ever had to just get plumb out of the house to be able to talk? <laughs> That's what I'm doing right now. I'm on the back porch, and it's kind of cold outside. But uh, my husband's inside, and uh, my little granddaughter's in there, so I thought... <clears throat> I've got to get somewhere where it's quiet. <laughs> I hope y'all like this recipe. It's got my house smelling amazing. And it's really good. The the masa, the cornbread made out of the masa is just, I won't make it any other way. It's my favorite way. It's so good. It's got such a nutty flavor to it. It's really good. So y'all need to try it. And the black eyed peas and the cabbage with all the seasoning and the rotel and tomatoes and the uh, seasoned hamburger meat is just really good. Now, you can put any kind of meat in there. You could put ham, you could put chorizo, uh, Italian sausage, anything like that. So that's just up to you. But I'm just telling you, it's really good stuff. But before I get off here, you know, tomorrow starts the, Jan the jarred up January. And I was asked if I wanted to join in, and uh, of course I said yes, because I thought it was, a, it was just a wonderful idea to have a whole month, every day in that month, of somebody canning something wonderful. And uh, every day it's going to be somebody different, and every day it's going to be something different being canned. So you need to get your pen and paper out. You need to write these names down. And um, every day you need to be watching for them. Subscribe to their channels because these are some fantastic canners. They're, you'll learn so much from all these channels. How to can um, just so many wonderful deals. Um, it's just, if you're either just starting out or if you're a seasoned canner, whichever, you're going to learn from all these channels. So what I'm going to do is I'm fixing to read you out because I had to write everybody. <laughs> I, I couldn't. It's not that I can't remember them. I just, your mind goes blank. So <clears throat> I'm going to read you off everybody's channel that's going to be canon and going to be in on the uh, Jarred Up January. And like I said, every day, one of these channels will be canning something wonderful up. So you got to watch for them. Uh, we got Sutton's Days. We got Freedom Homestead. Two Lee Lou. That's number two, Lee Lou. More to Life. Prepper Potpourri. Angie's Pantry. Paul's Rule of Thumb. Mouse Toes, and the Needy Homesteader, and me, Whipper Will Holler. And I, I, I hope I got them all. But these are wonderful, wonderful channels, especially if you're wanting to learn how to can or just to find something that's so awesome that you've never canned before. You will find it on these channels. So, starting tomorrow, one of these channels will be doing a canning video. And like I said, it'll go every day of January. You need to go to them. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to them. Because you're going to learn a lot from them. But, also, 
if you'll watch, on my, I'll have a playlist down in my description box. And each day I'll be adding each video to the playlist. That way nobody will miss anything. So always watch for that playlist. So, I hope y'all like this recipe. I'm excited about Jarred Up January, and I hope you are too. So tune in tomorrow and watch for that first Jarred Up January. And just keep on a roll until the end of January, because it's going to be good. So God bless everybody. Have a happy and safe New Year. And, you know, people use the New Year to, I don't know, start over sometimes. And uh, if that's what you need to get that jump start to uh, just whatever your goals are, then do it. And uh, don't give up on yourself. We all have a purpose. We're all here for a reason. And God loves us. So be safe and be happy. And uh, we'll see you later. Bye, everybody.